first, let me say, uh, everybody should learn to touch type. You will save so many hours of your life. It will take uh, a, a few hours uh, a night for about a week and you'll be able to touch type and it will save you hours down the line. I made my kids touch, learn to touch. Well, I say made them, I bribed them <laughs> with 50 pounds if they could touch type by the end of the week. Um, and it saved them enormous amounts of time. And they, they actually, it's one of the few things they're grateful for. <laughs> the argument is that when you're typing it, it's such an effort, um, you think about what you're gonna write much more before you put it on the page. Because, you know, if you make a mistake, you gotta throw the page away and start again. It swings and roundabouts for me. I, I think you are much more like, the enemy of a writer is the blank page. And it is much easier to, um, to rewrite something and make it good than it is to write something from scratch. Writing something from scratch is hard, it's hard. And staring at the blinking cursor or the blank page is, 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 is a horror. Um, and I used to, in the old days when I used to have a Mac, I used to, I used to have a welcome to Macintosh message and there was a hack program available where you could change that message and I, changed mine to it doesn't matter if it's crap because you can sit there thinking that's not good enough that's not good enough um and it's much better to to write uh than it is to think <laughs> really um so you write and then you make it better um and uh, for that reason as well i always like to start writing very early in the morning i get up and i'll get a cup of coffee and sit down and write because i'm not fully awake and at that time my critical faculty isn't as as virulent because <laughs> everyone has this voice in the rear and, and you everyone thinks it's unique to them but it's not saying you're crap you're crap you're absolutely crap um, and that the voice is, is much uh, more silent at, uh, at that early time in the morning so you can get quite a lot done i find before you start worrying about whether it's any good or not my own opinion is that great stuff isn't written it's rewritten and uh, when I'm writing a novel, I'll start, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. Um, I'm very kind of anal about it. I like to write in sequence. I'll start from the beginning. And then the next day, I'll go back to the beginning and improve what I've got and then carry on. And gradually working your working way. So each bit is, is edited quite substantially um, several, on several passes before it gets to the first draft stage. Yeah. Um, that's the way it works for me. And I think um, it's very difficult when you're starting out as a writer uh, to know what's wrong with something. That's the hard bit. So it's, it's all right when you've got experience, you say, oh, that's too this or that's not enough that. But when you don't have those tools in your kit, yeah. it's very difficult to rewrite. And uh, that's why most writers, uh, fledgling writers, ter are terrified of a, of a rewrite. It's kind of an interesting point that I get a lot of writers who come up and say, um, should I write on my own or should I write with somebody else? And I think particularly in comedy, it's very, very hard to do it on your own because you know, you could be sitting in a room giggling away at complete insanity. <laughs> and at least if you've got one other person there who's laughing, you know, you at least, the, you know, the chances are 50% better that you're not both completely insane. Um, so uh, if you humanly can write comedy, you should do it with someone else on there. And then that's when you start needing this, this language to, uh, to communicate, you know, the shorthand, I suppose. Of it. But it's not so much just the shorthand, is it? It's the actual concept, um, you know, so you both know what you're talking about and you know that concept uh, has been explored by both of you. It was a new writer sketch show. There were lots of other fledgling writers in the troupe. Mostly they were either, you know, complete idiots or they were just doing it for a bit of fun outside the day job and whereas we were deadly earnest and what you know this was what we wanted to do and uh, um, there was a big argument in the room about what constituted a um, uh, a parody and uh, the, the, there was a, a show on at the time called Roots Alex Hayes Roots uh, which was about the black struggle to freedom uh, in America and uh, it was very big at the time and uh, somebody proposed that the big showstopper at the end of the show, the big sketch at the end of the show, would be um, this piece uh, called Boots, 
which was about a northern cobbler. And that was the only reference it had to the, the show Boots. I mean, it was just, then after that, it was just stupid northern jokes. And we said, you can't just take the title and that's not a parody at all. That's, that's just a joke <laughs> that's quite funny at the top and then the rest of it is rubbish. So there was a big brouhaha and uh, we went away and wrote a, um, a parody, a, Chan a Raymond Chandler parody called The Big Melt, which was about a, um, uh, a mystery set in a, a waxworks where the, the Humphrey Bogart was the, was the private eye waxwork. Um, and they were melting down classic figures to, to uh, for, for, for new stars. That was that's what it was about. And and in order to do that, we read absolutely everything Chandler had ever written, including his diaries. I read his laundry list <laughs> and, uh, to study the styles and techniques. And we got all the and we got it right. And uh, it was a seven minute sketch in the end. And it was you know I'd say it was it was terrific and it was vastly better than Boots and. Uh, uh, we got paid, I remember, we got paid seven pounds a minute for a seven minute sketch. Wow. So, uh, 49 pounds between us and that was our entire earnings for the first year of comedy writing. And we really, really wanted to frame the check. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, really, we, nearly, we really needed the beer <laughs> and food and everything. So uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't even afford to photocopy it, which is a shame. It would be nice to have it there. Uh, okay, oh, this one. This is one you get, and all writers kind of get it. I've been asked it so many times. Um, I've gone through like the stages of grief with it, you know, <laughs> it's like denial and, and all that, <laughs> anger. And uh, because it seems to a writer, it seems like a very stupid question. Um, everybody gets ideas, surely, you know, I'm, I'm going to get up and make a sandwich is an idea. Um, what do you mean, where do you get your ideas from? And it was only recently I sort of came to understand that what they really mean, I think, is... Uh, where do you get such outlandish ideas from? They seem just to come from out of the ether. And I personally don't get ideas like that. And I wonder how they come about. Um, and I guess it's partly because um, it's the way you look at the world. It's the way you think about things. Um, I can't help but get ideas. And I'm sure that's, that's true uh, of most writers. You know, if I'm, if I'm having a hard time from uh, some clerk in the post office and they're saying, you know, and there's a big massive queue behind, this happened recently, big massive queue and you've been waiting for 20 minutes to pick up a bloody parcel that, you, you know, they could have just delivered it again anyway. And, um, and then you get to the counter and you, you, you get the parcel and then they say, how are you fixed for car insurance? <laughs> what about house insurance? And you think, for God's sake, there's a time and a place. But when, when that happens to me, I'm thinking, oh, there's a sketch in this I can do. Yeah. <laughs> so in a, in a way, it's kind of great because when terrible things happen to you, you think, oh, God, I'm going to put that in a sketch. Or someone's nasty to you, you think, I'm going to get you in a sketch on television. That will be your, your punishment. Um, and I just think it is, a, you know, we don't all have the same kind of imagination. And, and I think writers who hate that question don't realise that. Uh, you know, people's minds work differently and some of us are better at other things. Um, you know, some of us are better at technical stuff or, or making things or, or um, you know, making money. We just practice get ideas, it's what we do. So you should ask bankers, where do you get your money? <laughs> but um, if, you, if, if you're sort of saying, where do you get your ideas from? Because I would like to get uh, ideas like that. Um, the, the answer is, if your mind doesn't work like that, I guess you don't. I guess you don't get ideas like that. You know, maybe you can train yourself to, to get it, but I can't help you. I think if the, if the best you can do is to ask a writer where you get your ideas, you're never going to have any of your own. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably Spike Miller could, used to tell everybody, um, he, he, sent, he sent up a postcard to a woman in Whitby who sent him his ideas back. Um, and uh, an old producer, a writer friend of mine called Ron McDonald used to say, I get them from um, the label on um, ketchup bottles. 
if you look very closely, they're all there. <laughs> <laughs> so that leads on to, I got this, uh, you know, in the dinner party scenario, um, and people who don't know want to say, what do you do? And I say, and I never know whether to say I'm a writer or a TV producer or, or a comedian or a spy. I, don't, I never know what the, 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 is going to get me the easiest ride, really. Um, but this, has, this has happened several times, and you say, I'm a writer. And they say, really, a writer? And they sound fascinating and interesting. Saying that. And then they say, have you ever sold anything? And you think, what kind of people <laughs> are going around saying, yes, I'm a writer, who've never sold anything? You're not a writer if you've not sold anything. That's, that's your hobby. You know, you don't go, again, like you don't go to a brain surgeon and say, well, I'm a brain surgeon. Really, that's fine. Have you ever operated on a brain? You know, it's, it's, it's a bizarre one. Um, I think probably, you know, there's every profession has, has, has questions they don't, they don't like to get. Um, uh, I think if, if you're a gynecologist, it's probably, what do you do? Um, but for, for writers, uh, you know, uh, have you ever sold anything? This is a question I, I kind of get a lot. And um, it, it's very difficult because it's individually tailored. Uh, depends what you want to write and, and uh, how much you're prepared to put into it. Um, especially now, the, kind of the, the internet is the new frontier and people... I've had people come in and asking advice on how to write funny blogs, for instance, or podcasts. And, you know, there are a whole, there's a whole new... Uh, media being invented while we, while we speak. Um, but my, my advice for, for would-be writers always is write. You get so many people come up and say, I want to be a writer, and you say, well, what have you written? They say, well, nothing yet. You don't want to be a writer. That's like saying you want to be an astronaut. You know, <laughs> you don't want to be a writer if you've not written anything. Write, 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 and you'll get better. Um, and, and that, that is the biggest piece of advice you can give. Um, I got, um, there was a, a, some guy was writing a book about um, advice for aspiring writers and he went around all the, the big Hollywood writers and, and yeah. I, don't, I don't know where this quote comes from, uh, but one of them <laughs> said, thought about it, what your best uh, piece of advice for a would-be writer? And he thought about it and he says, whatever you do, get dressed every day <laughs> <laughs> because it is you know it can be a very lonely uh, solitary profession and uh, it is easy to slob around and not have discipline discipline is absolutely you know what you need you've got to you've got to I there are, there are two ways of doing it you either you know have set hours when you work or you have a set target to work to I prefer the set target because then I feel like if I achieve that I can either go on and write more, in which case I feel really self-righteous, or I can take the rest of the day off and, you know, watch some Seinfeld. <laughs> so uh, I like the target method, but it's, you know, again, it's horses for courses. And finally, this is the question that I don't get asked often enough by anybody, quite frankly, um, which is a shame because the answer is almost certainly yes. Um, so if you ever see me in public, you, you may ask me that question. <laughs>